Owning a home is an important life milestone for a lot of people, but the ever-increasing cost of construction materials and affordable housing is a major roadblock. And on top of that, traditional construction methods and materials cause a surprising amount of gas emissions and waste. But there's some really cool trends around some sustainable building practices that may change that, if you can get past some preconceived notions that pop into your head when you hear modular homes. Now, these aren't your father's modular homes. Cheaper, cleaner, extremely energy efficient, and still customizable. Can modular homes keep the dream of homeownership alive, as well as make a positive impact on the environment? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. Both the manufacturing of building materials and energy consumption of homes are major contributors of carbon emissions. The most commonly used structural materials like concrete, steel, and aluminum account for 22% of global CO2 equivalent emissions. In a typical building, 55% of embodied carbon is in the structure and substructure. But an even more fundamental issue? Building a traditional home has become way too expensive. Now, according to an analysis performed by the National Association of Home Builders, spikes in softwood lumber prices during the COVID-19 pandemic raised the average cost of a new single-family home by $16,000. Also, the producer price index registered a boost of 50.8% in iron and steel scrap. All of this makes people's dream of owning a house even harder. And on a personal note, I've been experiencing a lot of these price spikes myself because my wife and I have been looking into building a new home, which is partially why I went down this rabbit hole in the first place. I've got really bad timing for deciding to build a house right now. But we may have cheaper and greener alternatives that can make a big difference. Prefabricated modular or panelized homes. Now, a modular home may make you think of something like a mobile home or something not as durable as a traditional stick-built house. I know I did a little bit, but in my hunt to build an energy-efficient home, I found some interesting things. There are some significant differences between a modular home and what most of us call a mobile home, which is actually a manufactured home. A modular home is a house that's built completely off-site, section by section, inside of a building or facility, and then transported to the final site and installed on a traditional foundation. Now, these factories are massive, climate-controlled facilities that assemble homes according to the International Residential Code, or IRC, which means it complies with all state and local building regulations. IRC is similar to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, here in the US, and both roll out standards for quality and safety. Similar to modular homes, manufactured homes are also built inside climate-controlled facilities, but when it comes to manufactured homes, HUD requires each home to have an attached steel chassis to help with its transportation. Usually, manufactured homes have a pier and beam foundation with skirting that can be used to customize the house. They're considered a vehicle for tax and zoning purposes and can be relocated. In a nutshell, manufactured homes have to comply with the federal HUD building requirements, and modular homes comply with local requirements like a traditionally built house. And to complicate things a little bit more, there's also a variant of modular homes called panelized homes. In this case, just the structural components of the house, like the walls, the roof, and the floor systems, are built inside of a factory and then delivered to the worksite where it's finished just like a site-built home. But the panelized building system is usually a little more costly than modular. When a modular home has been completely produced, a semi-truck transports the different sections to the building site. Then with the help of cranes, the parts are assembled on a typical poured foundation, kind of like gigantic Lego blocks. And after it's assembled, the building process is just like a conventional build. It's connected to the utility grid, the interior is fitted with appliances and cabinetry and flooring. Everything's finished out just like a typical build. These indoor built homes are usually a single story, but there are companies making larger two or three story models as well. They require less on-site assembly because you're putting together and mating a few completed sections but a modular home will have equal or superior quality and a significantly lower price than a comparable site-built house. Because they're built indoors, bad weather doesn't affect or delay construction. And with most of the assembly done before it's shipped to the site, the building time on location is significantly shorter. One of the big reasons that modular homes are more affordable compared to on-site construction is due to waste. In the United States, over 500 million tons of construction and demolition debris are produced annually. Prefabricated homes can help cut back on that waste. An on-site home may have a few dumpsters worth of waste and scrap by the end of construction. Compare that to some modular home companies that may have a couple of garbage cans worth of waste. Better for the environment and your wallet. And while modular homes may not be as customizable as on-site built homes, they do have enough customization options to fit your style and needs. But here's where it gets really interesting. If you're like me and you're looking to build a net zero home or something closer to the passive home side of things, that means you can save significantly on your electric and heating bills. They can operate approximately 15% more efficient than a site-built home, 
having solar panels, water storage, low energy light bulbs, and other green features. Many modular home companies are focused in on energy efficiency and assembling homes with an incredibly airtight envelope, high insulation value, ERVs for air circulation, and triple paned windows. Some offer designs that can meet green building standards like Passive House, which I already hit on in a previous video, and I'll include a link in the description if you want to see that one. Now, depending on the company, some homes can be as much as 75 to 85% more efficient than a standard built home. The three key factors, though, that determine the cost of a modular home are location, size, and design. Enhancements such as custom flooring, countertops, utility hookups, electrical equipment, plumbing systems can obviously add additional cost. And if you want a larger, luxury style home, the price is obviously going to go up. Now, like I mentioned, location is a major factor in cost no matter what type of house you want to build. For example, a modular home in New York, where the median home value is a staggering $669,000, will cost much more than a home in West Virginia, where the medium home value is about $99,000. Now, in addition, to keep costs under control, homeowners should buy modular homes from nearby factories, because the further the factory is from your build site, the higher the transportation costs. The companies I've been looking at for myself are all located here in New England, where I live. It helps to keep those costs down. But how long does it take to build a modular home compared to a standard build? The process always starts with the design. In the case of a pre-designed modular home, this period is much shorter since the design is already done. So the customer basically picks the design and the contractor deals with the pricing and site prep. But for custom modular homes and site-built homes, the design stage takes much more time since changes may be necessary or the client is asking for customizations. Permits and zoning can take about three months for modular and typical construction and grading and site work takes about one month. But after that is where we start to see some time optimization. For modular construction, the foundation is finished usually within two weeks or so, and at the same time, the house is being constructed in the facility. On the other hand, the foundation work for a typical home takes about a month, and you can't start building construction until that's finished. The modular home parallel build path isn't the only edge it gets. Being built indoors means no weather delays. And while the whole process of building typically takes almost a year, Modular construction can be finished in eight months from permits to finishing. Of course, that can change with the design, size, contractor company, and the location of the house, or if you're trying to build during a pandemic. Construction timelines are much, much longer right now across the board for everybody. Regarding cost, a modular home typically costs 10% to 20% less than a stick-built home. A conventional stick-built, non-luxury home costs about $150 to $250 per square foot, while a modular home might cost you $50 to $250 for some luxury houses. But additional features, design modifications, taxes, and transportation that vary with the location can obviously impact the modular home price. The cost breakdown is 50% for construction, 15% for finishing, and 35% for the shell materials. So where do you start to look if you want to get one of these? There's no shortage of interesting companies in the market to look at here. The California-based Shelter Dynamics produces three sizes of modular houses. It's a little bit like Goldilocks here. The company has a one-bedroom, 450-square-foot house ideal for an individual, or a 750-square-foot, two-bedroom house for a couple or small family, and a 1,000-square-foot, three-bedroom modular home. For people who don't want the responsibility or cost of a big house, or people looking to downsize, these can be great solutions. The modular homes produced by Shelter Dynamics are net zero ready, featuring Energy Star appliances, on-demand tankless water heaters, LED lighting, a mini-split heat pump HVAC system with separately controlled zones, and standard solar panel array with options for larger systems and battery backups. The price is under $200 per square foot. Still in the US, Phoenix House sells five types of prefabricated homes. Selling options featuring from two to four bedrooms, triple pane windows, and 24-hour continuous fresh air systems. Some of the models feature heat pumps, solar panels, slab installations, and other energy efficiency features, even passive house certification. If you jump over to the UK, N House also offers several models of modular homes featuring eco glazing, LED lighting, air source heat pumps, high insulation, sustainable timber. You probably see a trend going here. Some innovations are a home management system, house batteries, solar panels, car charging, and even a robot vacuum cleaner. The N House B2 self built home is a 1,604 square foot, two bedroom modular house that starts at 124,000 pounds. In Canada, the Legendary Group, and that's the name of the company, not me calling them a Legendary Group, they produce panelized homes costing between $85 and $125 per square foot. The finished cost of completed home could vary between $250 and $350 per square foot, depending on the finishes. 
The company's homes come with a hybrid wall system complete with factory installed siding, trim, windows, doors. And according to the company, they're assembled in three days or less after delivery. And that's just a few examples from around the world. Companies I've been looking at here in New England for myself are Bright Built Homes, which makes modular homes, and Unity Homes, which makes panelized modular homes. Both offer incredible, energy-efficient houses. I've been really surprised by the prices and the flexibility available to build out a net-zero, energy-efficient home. In 2020, the global modular construction market size was $72 billion. And based on an analysis made by Fortune Business Insights, the market's expected to grow from $75 billion in 2021 to over $114 billion in 2028. With a growing trend to achieve net zero emissions in the coming decades, governments all over the world have been providing incentives with tax reductions, grants, and rolling out policies to drive energy efficiency and renewable energy. At the same time, modular home companies have been stepping up to help reduce energy consumption, reduce construction waste, and opening up more possibilities for people who can't afford expensive site-built homes. And it doesn't hurt that they're moving ready 30 to 50% quicker than traditional houses. Now, I've been looking into building out my own net zero modular home for myself, but it's been slow moving because of the pandemic delays and price hikes. Is this something that you're interested in? And would you like to see videos on my experience going through the whole process? Jump into the comments and let me know. Also, if you'd like to hear about follow-ups on each of these videos that I do, I do a podcast with my brother each week. Check out the Still to Be Determined podcast here on YouTube or your podcast platform of choice, like Spotify, Apple, or Google. It's everywhere. I'll include a link in the description. And not completely related, we've also kicked off a super nerdy podcast where we're going through all of Star Trek in chronological order, talk about what was going on in the world when those episodes were made, and our general thoughts. For that, check out Trek in Time, which is available in all the same places. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I've linked to right here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you think I've earned it. And as always, thanks to all my patrons and to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.